Now it's always easier to learn about something new when we can link it to something that we already know quite a lot about. In Physics 1A, we spent quite a lot of time learning about the gravitational force. So what we're going to do now is consider the similarities and differences between the electric force and the gravitational force. Now one of the major differences is that mass, which is what's responsible for the gravitational force, is always positive whereas the electric force is caused by electric charges and these can be both positive and negative. So we can have forces cancelling each other out in the electric case. Now with our study of electromagnetism, we're going to start with electrostatics. So this is where charges are stationary. We will later consider moving charges. Electrostatic experiments can be quite challenging to conduct because charged objects tend to discharge to the air and the charges also move about inside a body, most bodies, in order to cancel each other out. So one of the first scientists who managed to conduct some useful electrostatics experiments was the English scientist Joseph Presley, who in the 18th century showed that if you had a charged metal sphere and inside it you put a charged piece of cork, then the piece of cork inside did not feel any forces while it was inside that charged sphere. So hopefully this reminds you a little bit of Newton's law of gravitation and his shell theorem, which tells us that if we place an object inside a shell of matter, then that object feels no gravitational force due to the shell of matter around it. So this led Joseph Priestley to hypothesize that the electrostatic force also obeyed an inverse square relationship, so it also went as 1 on r squared. Now in 1785, the French physicist Charles Coulomb was able to provide evidence that this was indeed the case. So Charles Coulomb conducted a torsional experiment where he had charged objects and then he tried bringing another charge near it and this caused it to rotate and he could measure the size of the torsion in the string and from that calculate the amount of force. So Coulomb also managed to come up with a way to vary the charges. And so from his measurements, he was able to conclude that the amount of force was proportional to the charge on the two objects and inversely proportional to the distance between them. So this is now known as Coulomb's law and it can be written as F is equal to K Q1 Q2 on R squared. And you'll often also see this written in this course as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 on R squared. Now in this equation, Q1 and Q2 are the charges and they're measured in the SI unit which is now known as the Coulomb after Charles Coulomb. R is the distance between the objects, it's measured in metres. When we're using K, that's known as Coulomb's constant and it's equal to 9.0 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared per Coulomb squared. Or if we're using epsilon naught, that's the permittivity of free space and it is equal to 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12 Coulomb squared per Newton meter squared. Now in this case, the force is directed along the axis between the two charges that we're measuring the force between. If the charges have opposite sign, it's an attractive force. They both um, move towards each other if they're free to move. And if they have the same charge, then it's a repulsive force where they feel a force away from each other. Now you'll notice that the form of this equation is very, very similar to Newton's law of gravitation, which can be written as F is equal to G M1 M2 on R squared. But in this case, the gravitational constant is equal to 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. So this is a much, much smaller number. So the gravitational force is in fact much, much smaller than the electric force. 
Now, this may come as a bit of a surprise to you because in our everyday life, we tend to be more aware of the gravitational force. For example, if we trip and fall, we strongly feel the gravitational force of the Earth as we fall, um, whereas we're less aware of the electric force. The reason that we're less aware of it is that we can have both positive and negative charges and these, so we get a lots of cancellation in the electric force. And we tend not to get highly charged objects because of the enormous force that this would generate. So if we um, put lots of charged objects together in order to get a large charge, then there is going to be a repulsive force between all of those, which will be proportional to Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 to the 9 newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. And so this will give us a big number and that object just won't remain together. It will explode underneath that repulsive force. So another law which both the gravitational force and the electric force obey is the law of superposition, which tells us that we can break a system up into individual particles and all we need to do to get the total force is sum together the contributions of each of those particles.